Staple. A card that is considered so splashable that it is included in almost any deck the owner chooses to construct. Staple. Adjective. Main or important, especially in terms of consumption. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think they're the same thing. Although, why would you consume a staple? Hello everybody, and welcome to the answer of the question, what makes a staple as shown through the homemade trading card game, Chaos Galaxy. As always, links to the Discord and the YouTube so that you can join if you haven't already. This is a question that I asked a while ago. So me and a couple other CG nerds put our heads together and made a list of five steps that you have to go through to become a staple. Now, before we begin discussing these steps, there are two very important things that I have to let you know. First of all, there is gray area. Although a lot of these steps show specific categories that most cards that pass this step fall into, it doesn't mean that cards that don't fall into those categories can't pass this step. And another big thing is everything is very format dependent, which means that depending on the card pool and depending on what people are playing, some cards can be better in some formats rather than others. So the date that I'm posting this is what the current format is right now. Step one, is it generic? A generic card is a card that almost any deck will use. These cards work with just about anything, and it doesn't matter what planet it is, what archetype it is, it just works. A good way to test this is the pairing test. Does it synergize? So basically what that means is that you put it against as many different cards as possible, and you see whether or not it benefits or hinders those cards. A good example of this would be Galaxy Crash, kill all creatures on both players' planets. And it synergizes with almost every creature card because it hinders every single card. No matter the opponent, no matter your board, it's able to work. So it passes the pairing test. But a bad example of this would be Erratic Void, where it says that when your opponent free plays a creature with four stars or more, kill that creature. First of all, you have to free play it. Second of all, it has to be four stars or more. Now, there are a lot of four stars or more that you can use this on, and Erratic Void is certainly not a bad card, but the fact that it can't hinder all cards, and also the fact that they have to free play, which shrinks down your card pool even further because there are more limited cards that actually free play, Erratic Void is technically not generic at least maybe not in this format step two what card type there are five different card types in cg resources permanent resources attachments activators and creatures now usually what it comes down to is the amount of removal in the format so currently in this format the good types of cards that pass this test easily are resources and activators. Both of these cards have little meaningful removal. They still do have removal, but it's very limited or the type of removal is a bit strict. And then also, they're just generally very quick cards. Resources, you play them, they do their thing, and they're out of here. Activators, you use to counter anything. And they're just quick, easy little things, and that's why they pass this step. Attachments are more on the 50-50. They have a good amount of removal, but dependent on the abilities of the attachment, they can kind of nullify this removal aspect because even though they could easily remove it, it's still good enough ability to annoy your opponent. And then of course, they'll have to use some sort of removal, which can maybe be a waste to them. And that's why some of them pass the test, but some of them are just not good and show the bad side of the card type. The bad ones include permanent resources. Permanent resources are slow, they take up a resource slot, which means that you are forced to make two resource slots if you want to use things like resources and activators. And also, there's a lot of removal for them. There are many removal options for creatures too. However, there is a loophole for creatures to pass this test. Dependent on the planet and in terms of what format it is, 
some planets have better generic cards than other cards that make those generic cards pass this test for the staple. So that includes Sindel and Gaius are good planet cards. And ones that don't have as many good generic cards, at least in this format, is Sindian and Teklar. One good note that I got when trying to figure out what exactly this means, it matters because planets with good effects end up seeing more play, so their genetics end up being more meta-relevant. Just because a creature is from Sindian does not mean that it's not a staple, but it is something to take into account. Basically, some some planet abilities like Sindel and Gyros work really well right now in this format, because their creatures work really well. But things like Sindian and Teklar don't have as many of those cards that work well with their planet, which means that they have less good cards that can pass this step. It doesn't mean that cards can't pass this step that are from weaker planets, but planets like Sindel and Gaios have more of them, and that's what counts. Step three, is it a powerful effect? There are many different types of abilities that cards can have, there are three big ones that can most easily pass this step. Removal, free play, or draw. Removal is the ability to remove cards from the playing field in some way. Whether that means something like Pelfam, which bounces a card from your opponent's field back to their hand, or Charge Plaster, which you pay to kill a creature, anything that allows you to get rid of a card from the playing field is removal. Removal is a really good ability as it gives you the advantage and opens up the playing field for you to go in and make big attacks. The second one is free play or easy class play. Now when I talk about this I'm mainly focusing on controlling cards like Phantom Matter and For Sale Sign. Or another type would be cards that can bring other cards back to life after their death. So something like the Chaos Beast which when they die can bring cards or sometimes can free play, those are good abilities. And so are these, where it's like Phantom Matter, you can free play any of your opponent's creatures, which can be annoying. Or for Sail Sia, which you can pay stars to take control of a creature on your opponent's deck. So in general, anything that can bring things back to life or can control your opponent's cards are good abilities. The final main one is Draw which is the ability to really just gain more options. So something like Mystical Relic, although you have to discard a card and you have to put a one card on the bottom of your deck, that one card that you get, technically along with the card that you drew at the beginning of your turn, gives you two to work with. And although there's a little bit of luck, sometimes it can work out in your favor and you can get a card that works really well being in the discard pile already. And it also allows you the ability of choice on what to use first. Another good one is Droplet Squaws, or even Thorngaborg, where it says after this creature is killed by an opponent's attack, you can draw one card, which basically means that this is a plus two because after this one is killed, you go into your turn and you draw a card. So you get two cards to work with, which in general gives you more options. The gray area is very prominent because there are so many different types of abilities. So sometimes it's a weakening card like KO. Sometimes it has the ability to gain you points and that can be a really good ability like point turret. And then sometimes it might not kill anything or remove anything, but it might be able to just stop things from happening like planetary field. The reason why these weren't included is because there's a lot less cards that follow this trend and removal free play and draw draw cards are definitely the most prominent. Step four, is it efficient? So when looking at passing this step, the main goal is to look at if the card can keep you an advantage. Plus, neutral, or minus. Plus cards allow you to gain more from a single card. So something like Thorngaborg, where once it's killed, you draw one card, you technically get two cards in one turn. It's the same thing with Wackerman too. And in general, these cards allow you to basically trade one card for two or even three cards. And that is a very useful ability. And these are the easiest ones to pass the step. Neutral cards are also very easily able to pass a step as they kind of balance themselves out. So for instance, Angry Totem allows you to kill one zone creature 
except the opponent draws one card, and you can only attack with one creature this turn. And it balances itself out as it's a resource that allows you to get rid of a card, and sometimes this could be a plus depending on what deck you're playing, uh, which makes it a very versatile card, but in general, you waste a card, but you gain something. Same thing with Night Lightning Squaws, where once it's killed, you kill the other creature. This is a waste of this card, but it's also killing the other card, so it balances itself out. Minus cards are usually the worst ones, but this is a heavy gray area as well. Because as I was saying about allowing you to keep advantage, for instance, like card advantage is so, so important, or star advantage, and that's why plus can be good. Or neutral can be good, because although you are using one of your cards, you, that might be allowing you to gain advantage and there's less things that you have to worry about now. Same thing with minus. Although with KO and Planetary Field you're wasting a card and all it does is just minor effects and it doesn't really affect your opponent, it still gives the ability to keep that advantage. Not usually gain the advantage, but allow you to keep the advantage if you're already at one or try to stall them so that you can gain the advantage in the next turn. But step five is by far the most important step. Is it meta relevant? Now, there are tons of different cards that have been staples for a while now, and you can get a good look at what's meta relevant with the ban list. A lot of half ban cards, especially half ban cards that have been on the ban list for a while, such as Pelfam, Galaxy Crash, Beast of the Black Hole, uh, Phantom Matter and for a sale sign there are cards that are so strong that they have to be limited to one copy because if they weren't limited to one copy it would be horrible and that's what makes them staples because they're all so versatile and they prove their worthiness through passing all four of the other steps and then of course there are staples that were staples in previous formats or more of a staple um, that might not be in the format today and then there's some cards that might be staples that are from step 5, and I've already shown examples of things that pass some of these steps. And then there's even planet-specific cards that might be a staple in their specific planet, and we could go so much more in-depth into that. But this is definitely just a more general video. I think if you know how to figure out if something's a staple, you can pretty easily figure out how something is a staple in a specific planet. Now, here's the thing. Staple cards are not always perfect. The best way to look at it is that a staple card equals a card that passes four or more of the steps. So if it's able to pass maybe step one, step two, step three, and step five, and I, I would even say that step five is worth so much more because once again, it's very, very format dependent and it all depends on what cards are being used, what planets are being used. And, and the thing is, is that even though some of these like Pelfam and G-Crash have been long-standing staples, maybe one day they won't because many other cards take over as better options instead of that. But yeah, guys, that was my answer to the question, what makes a staple? Huge thanks to the people who helped me try to figure out this question, and of course this might become a relic of a past someday because a lot of these cards could become irrelevant, and a lot of these cards could become more irrelevant, and I'm excited to see what comes for the future. Once again, links are down below, and remember that happiness is a warm puppy.